Am I allowed to swear on this, by the way? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> this would be a very short interview otherwise. <laughs> Welcome to The Awardist. I'm Kristen Baldwin from Entertainment Weekly, and I'm thrilled to be joined by Ted Lasso writer and Emmy-nominated supporting actor Brett Goldstein. Welcome, and thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me, Kristen. It is uh, lovely to see you and to be here. Well, first of all, Ted Lasso got an incredible 20 nominations. That's crazy. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. What was your mindset like on nomination morning? The truth is, I was in my... We were in a hotel. We'd all, we, were, we all came to LA for the premiere. And I was in my hotel room and I didn't really understand how it works. <laughs> but, so I didn't, I didn't sort of fully understand the times or any other thing. So I, I didn't really think about it. And then Hannah Waddingham, who plays Rebecca, knocked on my door and I was just in my underwear and I like poked, poked my head out and she said, what, uh, oh, <laughs> she said, I've got news. And I was like, what? And she said, we've all been nominated for Emmys. And I was like, have we? And, <laughs> She said, are you in your underwear? And I said, yeah. And she said, well, let me in. And so then I called HR and <laughs> spent the day trying to report her. Uh, but it was, it's all so surreal. I mean, it's really wonderful and amazing. But, you know, I'm, I'm from England. This is not normal. None of this is normal. <laughs> and, it, no, and I think it would be worrying if, if I ever get to the stage where I'm like, yeah, of course, yeah, 20 Emmys, then you probably have right. to shoot me. Okay. For me, success is not about the wins and losses. It's about helping these young fellas be the best versions of themselves on and off the field. I always figured that tea was just going to taste like hot brown water. And you know what? I was right. Yeah, it's horrible. No, thank you. You were obviously a writer on the show initially, and then mm -hmm. you sort of decided to put yourself up for Roy and that you did yeah. some self tapes, some, an audition. Do you remember what scenes you did? Yes. One of them was the, I think one of them was the, uh, the, the scene in the pilot of, uh, if I don't hear silence, I'm going to start punching dicks. And then the other was, it was slightly different than how it ended up in the show, but the scene where Keely, where he's gone looking for Jamie and he's shouting at Keely and he's like, your boyfriend's a real Am I allowed to swear on this, by the way? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> this would be a very short interview otherwise. Uh, uh, yeah, it was that. And it was also the other scene in the car park with Keeley, which is the scene that made me think I could, that I think when I first started to think I could play Roy was the scene in episode five where he, she's packing up her car and he's there and he scares her. And she says, oh, yeah, nice one, sneaking up on a woman. He's, oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, so it was, those were three, those were three of them and the other two were probably more scenes of me shouting <laughs> <laughs> you really just wanted to get the voice yeah. across right yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. so you know as a writer on the show you've talked about how the writers sort of the characters evolve as the writers start seeing how the actors play them yeah. um, and I'm wondering how did the character of Roy evolve as you know your performance started uh, coming through to the other writers? That's an interesting question, and maybe something they'd have to answer. There's something I can tell you in terms of like story-wise, nothing changes really. You know, I think you lean into certain qualities people have. I've talked, I'm sure I've talked about this before, but Juno is the is the actor that most changed the part. Right. Because although her story was the same, nothing changed narrative wise, but because of the specific way Juno speaks and the way that she is funny, we started writing more towards that than how we had originally envisioned Keely. So that right. that definitely played to her comedic strength. And then with Roy, what I, what I can tell you that something that, that certainly developed more is, because, is, is with uh, Phoebe, my niece, Elodie, she was so great and and day one of working with her it was so clear that she was brilliant and you know child actors they're either amazing or they're awful and there's no <laughs> in between you don't know what you're going to get and she was so amazing and we had a good thing together and i think that's an example of we certainly leaned more into that it was always there but i think there's probably more of it now because of how good she was i was going to ask you i mean it's hilarious anytime Roy is around children especially mm. whether it's Phoebe or any kid I mean have you always been good with kids or how did this was it a surprise to you that you you had this chemistry yeah. with them 
yeah, real surprise. And I think, uh, yeah, I've heard a few people say you're very funny with kids. And I wondered, you know, I love the Muppets very much. And I wonder if it's a similar vibe. It's like yeah. being on the Muppets show when you're with kids. And I think it's the thing of, I don't see any difference. So it's like, I'm not treating them any different. Right. And, uh, you know, I'll be equally mean and shouty and sweary with a kid. I just don't see that you probably shouldn't do that with a kid. Right. And I I think that, I think that might be it. It's that I still don't really see a difference because I still feel like I'm 12. So it's like, what are we talking (laughs) about? You're just, you're just a little, little version of me. I don't give a shit. You know? (laughs) So you don't at all feel uncomfortable swearing as much as Roy does in front of the kids? Absolutely love it. (laughs) I need you to close your eyes for me, yeah? Okay. Can you describe your Uncle Roy? Everything that you can think of. Go. Well, he's my uncle. His beard is scratchy. He buys me ice cream. He swears a lot. He's really funny. And... I love him. Well done, Phoebe. See? I didn't hear anything about being a footballer. Who gives a shit what she has to say? She's six. So, talking to you now, it's clear that your normal speaking voice isn't exactly like Roy's. Roy's is a little gruffer, a little deeper. How did you come up with his voice? And do you have to drink a lot of tea to keep your throat from hurting? Good, good question. Uh, I think the, the, the it, it, you know, because we've been doing a lot of press, right? And and I'm very, it's it's interesting because you're forced to analyze some stuff that was instinctive. But then the more I've talked about it, the more I'm like, oh yeah, this makes this is where it came from. Roy is this cauldron of feelings, rage, but love, but 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 jealousy, but all of it. But he can't communicate any of it, and he can't let any of it out because he has been raised by the culture by his by his upbringing by yeah. football not to let any emotion come out so he's pulling everything nothing can come out and that's why his voice is like this because he's holding it all in because if he didn't have this he'd scream and sing you know so i think that's where the voice comes from it's it's him holding holding it all this stuff yeah in. yeah and does it hurt your throat uh we- I can't complain, can I? I mean, no. yes, yes, it's awful. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also love that in episode three, Roy does a hilariously bad impression of Ted Lasso, the howdy, y'all cowboys. Yeah. Was that actually how you sound trying to do an American accent or was it intentionally terrible? No, I just, it was always funny that, that Keely could say, wow, you are so bad at impressions it was like a funny character thing that you can't do impressions i can do a couple of impressions sure but it's not it was deliberately bad so you can do an american accent i mean i'm not going to do it for you now i'm not going to prove it we'll just have to take your word for it (laughs) thank you and i appreciate it so roy has so many great moments in season one as a nominated Mm -hmm. actor you need to choose an episode to submit have you chosen your episode it's difficult it's well again difficult i mean it's a lovely problem to have right but it's uh you know it's like what 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 do you want i there's so many i have favorite scenes and they're often to do with the co-stars you know like i love episode seven because it's the first time roy and keely get together and and i like uh the the scene with nate in the locker room and you know there's so much there's so many great scenes in that, but but it's not a particularly Roy heavy episode. Uh, so he's like, do you do that? Or uh, in the end, I think, I mean, basically I've sort of put it, I've asked other people because I, I can't really be objective about it. And I think that we are submitting episode nine, uh, okay. which is also everyone else's best episode as well. I mean, it's got this, it's got my favorite scene in the whole season and I'm not in it. <laughs> it's got the scene of, uh, Rebecca confessing to Ted. Yes. Uh, which is, is, you know, give give them all the Emmys for that scene alone. Exactly. And is yeah. that, that's the episode when Roy is yeah, on the bench. Yeah. And it ends with him touching the belief sign in the, in the credits. 
It's, yeah, it's just so, it's so sweet. I mean, you also wrote episode five, Tan Lines, which chronicled the end of Ted's marriage, but it, it's an episode where Roy's relationship with Keely really starts to blossom. And mm-hmm. I mean, as a writer and performer, what's it like performing in an episode you wrote and seeing the Ted Lasso cast saying your words? That's a good question. I mean, it's just a bit more pressure, isn't it? You're just, you're just thinking, God, I hope they're enjoying this. <laughs> uh every time they speak if anyone goes i'm not sure about this i'm like aren't you what's wrong with this life uh oh really you've got a different life have you uh no it was very it's also like an honor you know it's a real privilege to do so i didn't mind it i didn't mind it at all it was just a bit more pressure yeah and you're just thinking but also the cast is so good like take me out of it to see actors that good saying shit you wrote is pretty amazing there's so many great Roy and Keeley moments in season one, and it's one of the sweetest parts of the show that mm. whole season. Do you have a favorite? What is your favorite Roy Keeley moment? They're all good to me. They're all special. Uh, I do think maybe. that moment in the locker room is so beautiful. Oh, in the finale? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's very special to me. And also because Gino's so good and she's so... Um, generous as an actor and so she's taught me a lot I think and that scene yeah that was a big scene for me and it's a big kind of emotional and she like Keely in the scene made it safe you know what I mean Mm -hmm. made it so you can be vulnerable and all that talked a lot before about how often you ruin takes by laughing when you're uh, opposite yeah. Jason Sudeikis but how do you keep a straight face with Phil Dunster like I, I don't. don't as Jamie Tart like I oh, know I, I don't I never do I mean that is some um, it, it, he's the worst one for me I can't <laughs> Roy and Jamie scenes are the the devil's work <laughs> like, <laughs> I, 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 I don't want I mean, the reason the budget for this show is quite big is the amount of wasted footage <laughs> when it's a Roy or Jamie scene. And they're always us very close to each other. Yes, yes. Which makes it worse. I mean, I really, I'd love to say, oh, it's easy, but they're the longest, the most amount of takes I ever need is a scene with Phil Dunster. Is there it's one a, scene that you remember in particular where it was just tragic? They're all tragic. <laughs> Can I can ask you something. 40 kilos, do three sets of 10, and then I alternate between buys and tries. I don't give a sh- why you lift your little pretty boy. Yeah, you do, because you asked. Can you curl 40 kilos? Oh, but I can use your balls as a speed bag. Do you want to try that? Not especially. And one of the funniest and best moments is in episode seven when Rebecca's singing Let It Go and Roy is mouthing the words, and it's perfect. I mean, I assume that was in the script. How did that come about? Well, it's like a real, it's a real Roy thing. I, what I really like about that moment, I love that. That scene is one of my favorite scenes. I love Hannah singing at any point is is magic. I think Jason's acting in that scene is incredible. Yes. Uh, and I like the scene because the first time that Roy is kind of his old self like he's he's let himself out of the cage for the night and he's comfortable with Keeley and he's had a few drinks and they've won they've finally beaten Everton and he scored and so his guard is down momentarily and and I like that no one sees it no yes. one sees what happens but he he is not consciously because he's seen Frozen a million times with Phoebe <laughs> so he knows Frozen back to front whether he likes right, it or right. not he knows it and so he's unconscious for the first time. He, he's so relaxed for the evening that he, he has, can't even stop himself from having long to let it go. And perhaps doesn't even know he's doing it. Right. Which I really like. You guys are, you're up against three of your co-stars in this category. Mm-hmm. Brendan Hunt, Nick Mohammed, Jeremy Swift. Has the trash talking already started and how intense is it getting? 
look, it's wonderful we've been nominated as a team. And actually, it's better that we've been nominated as a team because otherwise it would be really awkward on set. It would be much worse. It's much, I'd much prefer we've been nominated as a team. But I do want us to wrestle at the Emmys live. And whoever wins that, then we can discuss whether they can approach the podium. We might none of our names might get called. And if right. I don't I don't mind, I still think we should wrestle. Sure. Just for something to do. I feel like that's a pre show on the red carpet situation. Mm-hmm. You know, tell people to tune in. Pay per view, make it pay per view event. <laughs> Very short pay per view event. <laughs> Who would win? The thing is, everyone's got got a secret weapon. You know, I was like, well, I'll, I I thought, well, I win, but I reckon, look, Brendan, I reckon has like hidden moves, like I reckon he studied <laughs> capoeira or something. Like, yeah, uh, you think you yeah. could take him, but he'll do one move and you'll be on the floor. I think Jeremy's got secret uh, pockets of rage, and Nick could come in low, take you over, like. It's not an easy match. Well, it has been a true delight talking to you. Congratulations on your nomination, the show's nominations, and can't wait to see that wrestling match on Emmy night. Uh, I I can't wait to do it. And uh, when the the other guys find out that I've now made this public, there's going to be issues. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you. Thank you, Christine. 